It's actually been quite a while, I think, since I did a Q&A video, and feels good to be doing one again. I appreciate everybody that submitted your questions. Uh, for those of you that submitted questions that aren't going to be answered in this video, I think I'm going to come back in a couple of days and try and hit some more. So have no fear. The time that your question could be answered is drawing near. Who knows? Whatever. All right, let's see how many questions we can get to in the next 10 to 12 minutes, shall we? I'm going to start off. King James 097 asks, Fuck, Mary, kill. Tris Stratus, Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair. You no good, rotten son of a bitch. No good, rotten son of a bitch. Like, why would you make me choose those three? I hate you. Uh... Hmm. Fuck Trish Stratus. Oh yeah, there's, there's 20 plus years of history there. Uh, Mary Jade Cargill kill Bianca Belair by repeatedly pounding her <laughs> vag into submission. <laughs> like, where's she gonna go? That's the way she's gonna go. You didn't say how she died. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, that's probably the fuck Mary kill order right there. It's tough though. Yeah. Uh, Kaya... Or K Awesome 24, excuse me. Is there a next big time major star after Roman Reigns? Certainly feels like the company's throwing their their chips in the Braun Breaker basket, right? Guy's in his mid twenties, second generation guy, got the look. You know, they seem to be incredibly high on him. So right now, if you're looking at house money or safe money to put on somebody being the dude long term. The next face of the place after Roman Reigns, it's probably Brown Breaker. Uh, Ella Edding. I hope I said that right. My apologies if I didn't. I watched a lot of your U videos on YouTube across the past two years, and one question that comes to mind is you wanting a Randy Orton versus John Cena match as the main event of WrestleMania. Is it pure sarcasm, or do you really think it has the potential to be a historic main event? Why can't it be both? John Cena, Randy Orton, this is Breakfast Club shit. This goes back a frickin' decade and a half! One more time at WrestleMania, and this time it counts! Are you fucking kidding me? At WrestleMania 40? These two guys at a stage of their career where they really don't give a fuck anymore? Could you imagine? The verbal barbs that they can throw back and forth at each other. Holy shit. Could you imagine being backstage, being in the creative meetings, as these two guys talk about who's going over, brother? That doesn't work for me, brother. Not in this Breakfast Club member's life, brother. And who the fuck wouldn't want to see this at this point? It'd be a match that John Cena actually give half a shit about. It's a match that Randy Orton would give half a shit about. Fuck yeah. Orton Cena, one more time. This time it counts. WrestleMania 40 for the whole shabanga bang a bang You're goddamn right I want to see it. Maybe. Unrestricted Minds Media, Mr. Rao. Why does Christian suck so much? <laughs> never change, Mikey. Never change. Uh, is it because he wants to be like that? Found your mid-fist mid-card piece of crap. So fucking jerk! Why does <laughs> Christian suck so much? It's probably because you have a raging hard on for Edge in a way that is only surpassed and eclipsed by your Michael Sarah man love. That's why. You're just mad that Christian got to be buddies with your hero Adam Copeland for so many years. That pisses you off to this day. And you know it does. You know what does! JJE261, how are all the pets doing? Well, that's a fantastic question. Uh, Summer the Beagle is doing well. She's tipping the scales a little over 40 pounds now, so she's thick. She's thick. I'm sure Roman would like that. She's thick. Uh, but she just turned 10 on June 2nd. So for those of you that followed the channel for a number of years, you probably remember Summer as a little pupper that could fit like in the palm of my hand. Yeah, she's 10 years old now. Ain't that some shit? Uh, the other dog, Piglet, is doing fine. Uh, Panda is doing fine. The cat, 
Um, they're all they're all doing well. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully they continue to do so. MC seventeen Clark, do you believe the story that the Iron Sheet would tell of Vern Gagne offering him money to break Hogan's leg before his iconic Madison Square Garden match? And if yes, what are your thoughts on that and the match itself? My thoughts on the match itself was is that Shiki Baby was the perfect guy to put over that Hollywood blonde jabroni Hulk Hogan. It wouldn't have worked the same with anybody else. It had to be Shiki Baby. Um, do I believe that story? Absolutely. I totally believe that story. That is the type of shit that used to go on in the wrestling business back in the day. Especially for a guy like Ganya who knew what Hogan could be. And he knew what he could be in New York? In the media capital of the country? And the way Hogan left the AWA? You know, fucking ain't right. I have no doubt in my mind that Vern Gagne, Gagne offered Shiki Baby big money to break his fucking leg. No doubt in my mind at all. Rockstar Tay asks, How would you advise our tribal chief to deal with the ungrateful ass, buster ass Usos? That is an excellent question. Those traitors, those no good, ungrateful sons of bitches. There's only one way. There's only one way for the tribal chief to exact his revenge and teach them a lesson. He needs to impregnate both of their wives and then start rumors that they cheated on their said wives so that way they are freaking get divorced and they got to pay child support. Like, if you want to make them learn a lesson, you want to make them pay, you make it hurt, baby. That's what the fuck you do. Go and you knock both of their wives up and force them to get divorced. Uh, they'll be paying for that shit for the rest of their fucking lives. That's what you do. Lankist 316. If you could pick a wrestling year to watch all over again, which one would it be? Great question. I've been around for a lot of years of wrestling, right? And I've seen some really damn good ones. I think the year that I point back to would be 1997. The amount of change you saw in the WWF from the beginning of that year until the end of the year is so striking. WCW was white hot. You had ECW, and that was the year that they had barely legal their first pay-per-view. That was ECW arguably at its best. So you had one company in WWF that was starting to get to a place of being near their best. WCW at their absolute best. ECW, I argue, absolutely at their best. Yeah, when I look at the talent, the characters, everything... Give me 1997 wrestling, and I'd be really, really happy if I could watch that again like a fan from beginning to end. T.O. underscore to King asked, you lived it. Was Rock bigger than Austin in 1999? Um, he was certainly on even footing. I think... There has always been a belief by many that he was bigger than Austin. Maybe there are some numbers that people could point to they feel like that supports it. Although I think you could point to The Rock in 2000 and use that as a better argument than 1999. Here's the thing. Like even as great as The Rock was at his, at his peak and as electrifying as he was and as much of a megastar as he was, it was still Austin's sandbox. You know what I mean? It really was. Like the biggest and most important star of them all was Vince McMahon. Don't ever kid yourself. Don't ever kid yourself, especially in that era. But I'd probably in 99 still, I'd, divert, I'd defer slightly to Austin. Sinner, 51190. James, what do you got for me this time? Years ago, you did a video on how Cena and Vince were out of touch because Cena was too dominant and you were absolutely right. Uh, that's probably going way back, I'd assume. When is it possible to say the same for Roman? At what point does him becoming or being too dominant hurt the roster? You know, it's an interesting question. They've kind of booked themselves into a spot with this. But no, fuck it. Roman is a hell of a lot more entertaining in his current packaging than Cena ever was at the overforced vanilla white bread piece of shit. Breakfast club, top of the guy, spot hogger. Period. You almost got me there, James. You almost got me to go in a direction you wanted me to go to. And I went, Eah! and I went in a different direction, damn you. Uh, Surge, nice try though. Surge TV 85. 
I'm assuming you still look like Rusev. You tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, why is Conrad Thompson such an AEW shill? I'm wondering why you're specifically singling out Conrad. I, I don't keep up with it that much. I think I've seen some stuff. Yeah, he probably is a pretty bad shill. A lot of these fucking guys are because it's about access. Because what Tony Khan also represents to them, which is just delusional, is he represents what a fan would be able to do booking and writing and owning a wrestling company. They can live vicariously through Tony Khan. They can't do that through Vince McMahon or even to a lesser degree, Triple H. They can, fans can live vicariously through Tony Khan. That's why. They want to support that. They also want to defend what they view to be the right way to do wrestling because if AEW fails, then they feel like a failure and everything that their entire wrestling fandom has been about is ass-fucking-wrong. And selfishly, it is about access for them. Like, it has been really eye-opening and really sad and frankly kind of pathetic the lengths that some of these cats go to to be such pathetic shills for AEW. Like, give a fucking life. Give me a break, man. So I'm with you. Like, it is kind of pathetic. It really, really is. Not surprising. Shouldn't surprise you, but it is pathetic. Bradley Xavier, th 15. Do you think Mrs. T value as a talent is off undervalued? Yes. He's a guy that someday you'll look back on and you'll think of him as being the good old days. I promise you that. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Miz has been a trusted, reliable hand for a number of years. Many times he's been one of the few interesting or entertaining things on their damn television product. Fuck anybody that says otherwise. George. Who was more over in 2008, 2009? Jeff Hardy or Barack Obama? <laughs> you know, it is a measurement of just how over Jeff Hardy was in that like year, two year window of time, right? In 2008, 2009, I do was fucking massively over. But come on, it was Barack Obama then. <laughs> Especially when you compare it to like who he was going to replace in George W. Bush. <laughs> Strategy. <laughs> Nuclear. <laughs> <laughs> it was Obama, but <laughs> that's a funny question. And uh, then B.W. Rosa closes us out by asking, have you seen any episodes of Dark Side of the Ring? If so, what episodes do you like? And what topics do you think they should cover next? I have watched some of the episodes, admittedly. Um, I'm not really a fan of them. And I'm not even saying that they're poorly produced or put together or anything. It's just, after so many years as a wrestling fan, there's so much dark shit associated with it. I'm familiar with so many of these stories to varying different levels. I just don't want to watch that shit anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to watch this depressing ass video about the Grams or Matt Bourne, I think was the most recent one, or, you know, Brian Pillman or any of these other number fucking videos. Like, I remember a lot of this shit. I know these stories. Why do I have to rehash bad shit when it comes to negative shit when it comes to wrestling? I understand people are interested. It can be enlightening in some ways, but it's just not for me. So I have watched some of them, and yeah, some of them in theory maybe are good. I just don't like them, and I frankly wish the shit would stop. Because it's profiteering off a of tragedy. And I just don't want to see that anymore when it comes to wrestling. So thanks all of you that submitted your questions. Like I said, I'll try and circle back in a couple of days and answer some more Keep those questions coming for future Q&A videos. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter. I am out.